So you want to play as a Shadow Monk, the monk's edgy, darkness-based subclass. But how good is it? And how fun is it to play? Well, that is what we are going to find out. I'll be giving each of this subclass's features a grade from S to F, based on how fun, interesting, useful, and flavorful the feature is. And at the end, I'll give an overall grade, along with any changes I think would help the subclass better overall. So with that out of the way, let's hop right into the review and the grading. Monks of the Way of Shadow follow a tradition that values stealth and subterfuge. These monks might call themselves ninjas or shadow dancers, and they serve as spies or assassins. Sometimes a ninja monastery's members are family members, forming a clan that is sworn to secrecy about their arts and missions. Other monasteries are more like thieves' guilds, hiring out their services to nobles, rich merchants, or anyone else that can pay their fees. Regardless of their methods, the heads of these monasteries expect the unquestioning obedience of their students. Every monk subclass gets their features at level 3, 6, 11, and 17. Sometimes they'll get a second one at level 3, but not this time. You know, it feels weird. The first two reviews I did were on caster subclasses, and now I suddenly don't have to go over spellcasting. And sure, the Shadow Monk definitely has some magical elements going on, but they never get a spellcasting feature, even if they do get some spells. So we actually just get to jump right into the first feature, Shadow Arts. So, I know I just said that this isn't a caster, but you still get some magic, and you kinda get that magic right away. Shadow Arts gives you the Minor Illusion Cantrip, and for two key points each, you can cast the Darkness Spell, the best one, Dark Vision, which you might not even need depending on your race, and Silence, another really good one. It shuts down non-sorcerer casters really well, and is just good for being an assassin or ninja style of character. I'm not sure how I feel about just getting a few spells as your first feature, but they do fit the theme really well, and they are pretty useful, well, aside from Dark Vision. So I think for Shadow Arts, I'll give it a solid C. Not bad, but not really good either. Perfectly serviceable. Which means we can move on to one of my favorite features for the subclass, or hell, even the whole goddamn game, and one that I kind of abused in one of Metal's games? That being Shadow Step. This one just makes me feel like Night Stalker or Reaper from Overwatch, jumping from shadow to shadow for surprise attacks. What this feature does is with your bonus action, and as long as you are in dim light or darkness, you can teleport to another spot that is in dim light or darkness that is at most 60 feet away from you. And you get advantage on the first attack you make after you do this. Now I know this probably isn't how this feature was meant to be used, but one of my favorite things to do with it was to use other people's shadows and warp between them. As long as, you know, you can convince your DM that a shadow is dim light. Also, there is no cost, no key points to spend, and not even a limited number of uses. So you can just silently teleport through an entire complex without ever worrying about getting stuck as long as you can see somewhere else. There's no downside. Like, I guess you can't flurry of blows if you use this, since it takes your bonus action, but that is really stretching for a con. So, Shadow Step is getting an A. I'm tempted to give it an S, but I'm saving S for more broken abilities. And while not quite broken, this next ability, Shadow Cloak, is also free but not really as useful in combat. It does pair well with Shadow Step though, letting you turn completely invisible, and again, there's no limit or even a time limit on it. As long as you don't attack, cast a spell, or step into bright light, there's literally no time limit. You can just be invisible forever. The only other thing that does that is the Ring of Invisibility, a legendary item. So that is another solid A for Cloak of Shadows. So far the subclass is actually looking really good, and the script is also looking super short. Is this what it's like to have a simple and honestly really good subclass? They can't all be this short, right? Well before I give my final grade, we have one last feature to look at. So let's check it out and see if it makes it even better, or if somehow it pulls the entire subclass down. 
The final feature for the Shadow Monk is Opportunist, letting you take advantage of the fact that your allies are distracting your target. Whenever one of your allies hits a creature that you are next to, or within 5 feet of, you can use your reaction to attack them again, meaning that depending on how your turn went, you could get between 3 and 5 attacks in a single round. And again, there is no cost. You don't have to spend any key points to do this, and you also don't have to worry about running out of uses of it in general. So as long as you aren't being bombarded by range attacks so much that you have to use deflect missiles every round, you're free to just throw some haymakers every time your opponent looks away for even half a second. So what grade does this last feature get? Well, I was going to give it an A, but this is your capstone ability, and it just doesn't do enough for me. It's a nice feature, I'll give it that. But as a final feature, something that's the accumulation of all your training, this just isn't impactful enough for an A. But I will give it a B. Which brings the final grade for the Way of the Shadows Monk to a solid B+. And honestly, I don't think I have anything to fix. Like, maybe add something else on top of the level 3 Shadow Arts, but... I can't really think of anything off the top of my head for that. Wow, um, yeah, I wasn't expecting this to be such a quick review. Maybe more of these will be like this, and they'll be super easy to edit. Like, the Eldritch Knight script was a full page and a half, almost two pages longer than this one. But I'm not going to count on that, so for now, I'm just going to send you guys to Future Me for the wheel spin for the next video, and for your outro. Okay, we are back at the wheel once again. I'm just going to give this a few clicks to shuffle it up, and then we'll give it a spin. Let's see what we get. Hopefully something that isn't another monk, because I'd rather not do two monks in a row. Ooh, the Rune Knight Fighter. I haven't really looked at that one, so that'll be... that'll be interesting. So yeah, we can look forward to that video next time. I'm not sure if it'll be next week or the week after. I might have something else coming through there. I'm not sure yet. But at some point in the near future, we will be looking at the Rune Knight Fighter. I hope you guys enjoyed that review. It was uh, it was fun to go back and look at the Shadow Monk. It's been quite a while. I think that was honestly one of the first like three characters I ever played was my Shadow Monk Tiefling. And that was really fun. What would you guys think if I also started doing reviews on, like, the races and lineages? If anyone actually gets this far in the video, go ahead and, I don't know, comment tell me what you think of that. And, uh, yeah, thanks for stopping by. I will see you guys next time.